This is a film about classical architecture, which is really based on five different kinds of column, which are called the five orders. And so I'm going to draw out the five orders so that you can see the difference between them. And I'm going to start at the left-hand edge of this page with the simplest of the five, which is called the Tuscan order. And an order, as it's called, starts with a column. So I'm going to draw here the base of the column shaft. And what that sits on is a column base, which has a moulding on it, something like that. And then the diameter of this column we're going to call D. Um, now this column is going to be seven times the height of its thickness at the bottom. So this height here is going to be 7D. And what happens is that for the first third of the height of the column, the sides are parallel. And after that, it starts to taper inwards. So by the time we get to the top of the column, it's quite a bit narrower than it was at the base. And the taper has a very slight curve to it, which is called entesis. And uh, it's really an, an optical correction to make the column look graceful. So at the top of the shaft of the column we have a capital which is shaped like this. So those are the main parts of the column itself, the base, the shaft, and the capital. And then on top of this is a large horizontal beam which is divided into three parts. And the first of those parts here, this is called the architrave. And that has a shape like that. And then on top of that this bit is called the frieze, and that has a cushion moulding on it. And then the top part is called the cornice, and that has some more, is a bit more complex. And then these three parts, the cornice and the frieze and the architrave, together are called the entablature. And the entablature is roughly twice the bottom diameter. So there we have the column, the entablature made up of the architrave, frieze and cornice. And this is the Tuscan order. The next order I'm going to draw is a little bit taller. So whereas the Tuscan was eight diameters high, the seven diameters high, this is going to be eight diameters high. And I'll draw the column the same thickness at the base. And this base is slightly more complicated than the Tuscan one. And this order that I'm drawing now is called the Doric order. And it's quite easy to mix up with the Tuscan order because they're both quite plain. But um, there are some important differences. So again, 
the bottom third of the column shaft is parallel sided and then it starts to taper inwards and that taper has a curved emphasis on it and then we get to the top and again there's an astragal moulding here and then above that is the capital and so those are the capital mouldings and then on top of that we have um, the entablature again and that is again divided into the architrave, the frieze and the cornice. So here's the architrave and the frieze and the cornice and you can see that the frieze here is quite a bit bigger in proportion to the Tuscan order and here is the cornice which has a whole set of mouldings. So each of these curved little profiles that I'm drawing is called a moulding and the different kinds of column have different sequences of mouldings. And then here this is the thing that makes the Doric order most recognisable is that above the centre line of the column there is a rectangular block in the frieze with grooves in it and this is called a triglyph and off the bottom of the triglyph are little pegs or tassels hanging off the bottom. So that is a triglyph and if uh, you are ever confused about whether a column is Tuscan or Doric, if it has a triglyph I would say it is definitely Doric. So we now come to the next of the orders and again starting with the base of the column and whereas the Tuscan was seven diameters high and the Doric was eight we're going to make this one nine diameters high and so here is its base moulding which is similar to the Doric one and again we call the bottom D and so nine diameters high takes us to here and at the top it's tapered so it's thinner and the bottom two thirds are parallel sided and then the taper starts from there. with the gentle curve of emphasis. So now we come to the capital and here we have big spirals on either side of the capital and these are called volutes and these give this kind of column a slightly more feminine character and this that I'm drawing now is the Ionic order. So the Ionic is easily identified by these spiral volutes in the capital and then on top of that is the entablature which again is divided into the architrave which I'm drawing now and then the frieze which is here 
and the cornice. And those are the mouldings of the Ionic cornice. And you can see in here, just near the bottom of the cornice, are a row of dentils which are little square projecting blocks. So this is the Ionic order and the height of this is nine times the bottom diameter and I should also now mark on the height of the Doric column which is eight times the bottom diameter. So seven for the Tuscan, eight for the Doric and nine for the Ionic. So the next of the orders I'm going to draw is the Corinthian and so like the previous ones we will start with a line here for the centre of the column and uh, the thickness of the base we will call D and the, the bottom of the shaft is the base moulding. All of these base mouldings that I'm drawing are half in, in height, are half the bottom diameter of the column. So here are the base mouldings and that height there is half D. So like the other columns the bottom third of the column height is parallel sided and then it starts to taper inwards. And so here is that slightly curved taper. And uh, the height of this column is 10 times the uh, bottom diameter. So that dimension is 10D. But you can see that there's quite a bit more space allowed for the capital on this one than there was on the Ionic. So the Corinthian capital is much more decorated. In fact the Corinthian order really started as a kind of luxury version or more decorated version of the Ionic order and it starts with two rows of leaves that grow from the neck of the capital like this and these are acanthus leaves which are all sometimes carved and sometimes left plain. So there's one row of leaves and then this is the next one here like that. And then from behind the row of leaves there spring smaller volutes like this which come out at the angles of the capital and are in turn supported by more little leaves here and then there's often a rosette in the middle of the capital there and so that is the Corinthian capital and then on top of that we have the architrave and frieze and cornice. So here is the architrave with its various mouldings and then the frieze and then the cornice. Now as you might expect from this more decorated capital the cornice is quite highly decorated and it has projecting blocks which sit at this level of the cornice 
which are called medallions. And there's always a medallion over the center line of the column. So that's here with its leaf. And then the moldings underneath, which are called the bed molds. And then the moldings here at the top of the cornice. And so these projecting blocks here, these are called medallions. And not to be confused with these, which are called dentils, and are much smaller, and they don't have a supporting function in the same way as these dentils, which are much bigger, these medallions rather. So um, again, this is the architrave and the frieze and the cornice, and this is called the Corinthian order. So the last of the five orders I'm going to draw here. And this is quite similar to the Corinthian. So we'll start with the bottom diameter. And this also is 10 diameters high. So if I draw the centre line of the column here. Um, it has a similar height of capital and the, uh, the tapered diameter at that point. And the bottom third is parallel sided, which is here. And then here are the curved tapered sides of the column. And the column base is again very similar to the Corinthian column base. Uh, the, the, this um, order that I'm drawing now is called the composite order. And uh, so its main difference is in the treatment of the capital. So here is the top of the shaft. And then like the Corinthian order, we have two rows of leaves, um, the same acanthus leaves that are used on the Corinthian. So that's the first row and then the second row here. They alternate in the way they're laid out. And then above that, at the top, again, we have a tile. And then coming out at 45 degrees are much larger volutes like this. And then this would often be decorated with enrichment. In fact, all of the mouldings that I'm drawing in classical architecture, all mouldings can be decorated with uh, various kinds of enrichment. And so that is the composite capital. And you can see that it, in essence, is a combination of the Ionic and the Corinthian. So if you see something that resembles a Corinthian capital, but has giant uh, volutes at the corners, then that is a composite order. And then we have the um, architrave and frieze and cornice as before. There's the frieze and then the cornice, which like the Um, like the Corinthian order has medallions in it. I'll just bring those forward slightly. And there was, will always be one on the centre line of the column, which is there.
And so there's the cornice and frieze and architrave. And this is the composite order, which is the last of what we call the five orders.